We are live. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am one of your hosts, Blake Rafino. Alongside me is my counterpart, Joe DeLeon. Good evening. Good, sir. Blake, it feels like this is the show today is going to be the precursor for what is going to be a wild next couple of months. I, I feel like the two well, topics that we have today are setting the table for some much bigger moves. These are This is so minuscule, in my opinion, what we're going to talk about, and I'll let you lead us in for what could eventually end up happening. So basically, obviously what you're talking about is the Super Leagues that has somewhat been announced and basically in retrospect going to European soccer as a model. Joe, mm -hmm. not only is it not going to happen, but the South will riot. Why? The, South, uh... the South will riot. Why? Why? Because because of the relegation aspect of it? I don't think no, that that's going to play in No, way. mainly due to the fact if you take away the Iron Bowl every year, if you take away some of these things every year because, you know, you're in different tiers, like Alabama's in tier one, Auburn's in tier two, that's how – which people aren't – see, I had to go and ask somebody that covers this. Joe, you do realize, like, if Auburn's in tier three, which they would be in right now, Wait, what, I, I'm I'm confused on the I from what I read it was just supposed to be the what was pitched was seven ten team divisions and then there's an eighth ten team one that is an intermediary of teams that were correct. moving up and down in relegation. Correct. I However, didn't interpret it as there being tiers. But though. if you keep reading, they talk about tier the top one, the tier one teams in that ten play each other. Then you play tier two. Tier ones don't play tier threes. I think it, that that aspect of it want, probably won't work. I don't. I don't disagree. Well, on that. The rest of it, though, I like. I think the rest of it makes sense. I. I don't. I don't want to say it's wrong. What? Keep the conferences. Shut up. Keep the. Put your panties back in a wad. Out of a wad. Grow up. Figure out the playoff and move forward. Joe, you know who we both played in the FCS. Do they have yeah. an issue? With with uh, well, especially right now, there's an issue in, in talent gap. There's a huge. No, issue. is there an issue with the playoff? No, because no. it's it it. And it's you know what else is them up? though? It's not unique. It, we're about to we're about to see it literally play out. I, I'm they, saying it's they, unique because it would only work for the FCS. It wouldn't work at any other level. Why do you say that? Because there's a nut, well, albeit that there is a talent gap for the top couple of no, FCS no, no, teams. No, like no, 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 no. What I'm saying is we have a model where we can go and look at this and see that it's successful in college football. It's called the FCS. The talent gap's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking mm -hmm. about is you have a model that's already set up, that's had success in doing this while maintaining conferences. Use that. Yeah, but there's far less money on the table for the FCS and what they're dealing with. The, there's Joe, a lot, there's a lot less complications. There's no NI as much NIL that's it's in play. You're here. missing what you, I think you're missing what I'm saying. What I'm saying is instead of doing the European soccer model, uh -huh. let's do the FCS model of playoff. You've already agreed to TV revenue. Putting teams uh, where uh, you're gonna put teams is where they're gonna be. I think there's a lot more complex details that, and we'll okay, say well, well, we Of course, we're going to argue about it. So here yeah. we go. We'll talk about the Super Leagues. Joe, also, Florida State gets denied their appeal to exit the ACC. Um, let me just say this. Kind of told you, not you, but told you it was coming. I mean, it was the most obvious thing that could have ever happened. Yeah, I I know that we kind of speculated and and talked about this a month or so ago. Yes. Um I'm surprised by actually I'm not surprised by that this is how this this came out. I'm intrigued by that one of the things that came of this is that the courts despite them trying to dismiss the initial um nice bot comment there. Uh the initial I was talking about really the initial uh, court movement, as you as you mentioned, that the court still kind of justified their decision and their action to still file the suit. What do you mean by that? 
the because the one of the things that I that I caught in one of the articles I read is that the one notable you know the one win for Florida State is that the judge dismissed the ACC oh. argument that Seminoles breached their fiduciary duties to the conference. Correct. So they're still acknowledging the court is still acknowledging that their lawsuit is valid. It is valid to be heard. It is valid for it to go go to trial and for them to to, to move forward with this. They just turn down the initial um what's the word i'm looking for i'm drawing a appeal i woke up before I, yes i wrote i woke up at 4 a.m this morning <laughs> 1 a.m technically but that's my whole point though is that 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 is the one indicator that kind of stands out to me that the court still is validating the decision so i know you, we we debated off air about if we want to get legal in this they do that with everything uh, judges will say that they think the case should be heard, but you got to do X, Y, and Z. Joe, they're not. I, I don't think that they can win this. I think they're going to have to pay out. So if you look, you signed a contract. You're in a breach of contract, by the way. If you're Florida State, and I, I, again, I think it comes to a uh, it comes to a point where now it's on record in a court system where you're in a breach of contract, which. I mean, Joe, they're going to have to pay out. I mean, this is civil case 101. Like, this is civil liability case 101. Do I think that they have some form of argument? Sure. But, you know, I I heard an attorney talk about this case, and he was given an example. You know what it's like? You know how when you have buyouts in contracts, like coaches get fired in buyouts? Basically, Mm -hmm. it's a buyout. Right, like if yes. you're going, if you're going to label it as something in the sports world, think of it as a buyout, and it's basically when a team fires somebody and they want to fire them with cause. Right, they don't have to pay the buyout. It's very difficult to do that. Right, like we, that that doesn't happen often in college football. Jimbo Fisher, you think they could have found cause with him, but yet they're spending seventy five million dollars right. speaking of Florida State. So I, we'll talk about that. But here's another thing that I want to pivot that on a little. Clemson also came to the table in favor of Florida State and why I think that that was a problem and why I do think that the ACC might have a little bit of a case here to where they might be okay and they might not go under like the Pac-12. So we'll talk about that. I think, yes, I think the win the other day for for the ACC is bigger than people are giving it credit for. So yeah. we'll, we'll we'll talk about that. Everybody do us a favor by hitting the like and share. Share to all those groups. Share to all of those social media pages. You're watching us, listening to us on YouTube. Like, subscribe, notification bell, wherever you're listening to podcasts. Rate, review, and subscribe. Joe, by the way, for whatever reason, we had a debate on Ohio State last week, and for some reason, they love me more than you. I, I don't understand. What? Wait, yeah. no, bull BS. Yeah. You're making no, 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 I'm not. They're in the comments. They, bl- one guy said Blake for president. You know, you're I'm made, just, you're, like, you're making that up. Okay, which way? Which I, video? Which maybe, video are you talking they about? Said Joe for president. Maybe is I'm it, over. Is it the Chip Kelly one or the Jim Knowles one? Because it's, it's probably the, Jim, the Chip. Yeah, the Jim Knowles one. Why would they be supporting your argument? I was the one who was supporting him as the as a better defensive you coordinator. Know why? Than you know Because I don't think that you want to know the truth. I don't think they think he's as good as that. Like people are, are projecting him to be. Well, the Twitter video that's trending right now would would say otherwise. By the way, I'm, I'm no. Predicting- it's crazy how platforms. I, I mean, I got called so many Rudy poos in a matter of 25 minutes. Thanks, asshole, for posting that <laughs> one. I mean, geez, oh, I mean, the Jeremiah. You're talking about the Jeremiah Smith one. That's a that's a that one's done well on TikTok. I am predicting right now, though, and this is going to be our second full season to doing the show. I am predicting that the fan base that is going to ride with us during the whole season is going to be Ohio State. They're going to be this year's uh, Florida State for us. Or Georgia slash Georgia. Hot take. You ready? Speaking of Go Florida State. Um, you live by the portal. At some point, you're going to die by the portal. When is it going to be the year? I did a deep dive on teams that have taken a lot of kids from the portal. Mm-hmm. Joe, do you know that every one of them under – under uh, uh, not undersold, but underdid their production that everybody thought that they would have at least once in the last three years. Yeah, it's probably one of the most overhyped roster building concepts because everybody freaked out that Deion Sanders brought all these new kids in two years in a row. It's and, not and, a successful and, team building 
Correct. System. The only team you can't really say that about is Florida State. Will this be the year with DJU at quarterback that that happens? I don't know if I believe that. Mm-hmm. Joe, I, I, I got to tell you, though, I'm constantly building on Miami right now. Uh, I, they're a Mario Cristobal head coach away from might winning the ACC. So they might it still might suck. I mean, I don't disagree with you on Miami. I think that they're going to be – there's going to be a couple teams that we're really going to ride going into this year. Georgia, awesome. Ohio, Ohio State, and Miami seem to be the early favorites. I don't know if I'm riding them in that category, but for a Tier 2 type team, like a playoff type team, I'm – Well, I'm, I mean, I just mean like a team that we're going to – I think that if we hype somebody up that we, you know, we start to get a lot of – viewership and support from those fan bases i'm kind of getting those vibes early on is what i'm saying agreed all right let's talk about our good friends at betonline.ag by the way joe um where is our no- number one notre dame fan from twitter says else dude dude that that guy is unbearable if that guy is who i think he was when we first started he went on this ridiculous rant about how we need to be a call-in show so that he could call in and yell at you, and he was saying that how oh, I wasn't giving you enough shit. His dumbass doesn't realize this isn't a fucking radio station, and that's not <laughs> how that works. Like, I'm not gonna hold my phone up to the goddamn microphone like a Neanderthal fucking moron. I, I really don't like that. Guy. I mean, he I have, have makes I have fans fans fucking stupid. In too. I mean, I can I can set that up right now. I, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk to him. I mean, that that guy makes all the Notre Dame fans look like absolute morons. And I hope he didn't go there. Like that would really upset me if he went there because all the Notre Dame alumni that I know are not that insane and aren't that stupid. Well, this is what I think started it all too. Did you see your former coach on a jet ski with Travis Scott this week and Brian Kelly? I I did see that. Yeah. I am going to be unbearable with that clip. Wait until after their spring game and some commitments start coming. I am going to be unbearable. By the way, still the number one class in the country, and they're not. I don't know. I've heard some things. So I think that here's what I'll say from a national a national football perspective. Recruiting in the South is getting much easier now that Saban is out. It doesn't surprise me. It shouldn't, but it, it <laughs> it's good for a lot of other teams. So how about our good friends over at BetOnline.ag? Everybody hit the like and share. Me and Joe debate on Super League. We talk about that next. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way for you to wager on all of your favorite sports, contests, events, with the first to market odds in lines. Find reviews for all the news for each league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, college sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports information for live in game betting, props, and futures. Head on over to Bet Online today and use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's BELIEVE50, B-L-E-A-V-5-0, to receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's betonline.ag, betonline.ag. All right. So, Joe, over the last couple of days, and um, how do I want to start the, the segment off? Joe, it's been reported on, and then a lot has been happening over the last, let's just say, 72 hours or so that a Super League was discussed about college football, and not only college football, but only for college football, meaning that it would a Super League would only be for that sport, every other sport. It would not happen, basketball, baseball, others. And Joe immediately um, – I forget the gentleman's name from on three reported along with Ross Dellinger that this is just not going to happen while Greg Sankey and Tony Petiti are the commissioners of their respected conference. I guess, Joe, the model that was put out was like European soccer of how they do things. Mm-hmm. I, I got to admit, I, I, I it's not going to work for me. I, I think that it would it would be so dumb to do that. Again, like I've told you, we have a model in place literally in the United States when it comes to a 16-team playoff 
okay, that has had success while having conferences, while playing teams inside your conference. Now, the money discussion, I don't think is a big deal because, Joe, you're just talking about seeding. What do I mean by that? You're going to have – you already have agreed to the automatic qualifiers, right? So with that being said, and the playoff still giving you their top 12 every week or after the midway through, the FCS model has worked while maintaining conferences. Doing a big-ass Super League does not and will never work in the States, especially for football. It would be yeah. the dumbest thing that has ever happened. I, okay, see, the, the, I'm already completely off the uh, – You think I, it's completely, work. So, Okay, so first of all, College Sports Tomorrow is the entity that pitched this. And some of the members that are represented in College Sports Tomorrow – these aren't just random, you know. I don't uh, give two investment. Wait, 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 wait. I'm just, I'm just, bro, I'm just adding the context. I'm just adding okay. the context. This is not like supporting evidence or anything. It's not like this is some other group of sports executives from other leagues that are trying to put this together. Right now, it is Syracuse's chancellor Kent Sieverd, West Virginia's president Gordon Gee, uh, and Brian Rolap, and then a top executive under Roger Goodell with uh, the NFL's league office are just some of the notable names that are part of this. And what are they doing in I, there anyway? What do you mean? None of those schools should have any say so on what happens in college football because okay. their schools are ass. See, this is why I we can't, first of all, immediately diminish a quality idea just because certain people bring it to the table. I, I firmly think that this is one of the first constructive building blocks I'm not saying that this is the end all solution that needs to be enacted, but I think that this is the most coherent building block that we can move on from that Tony Petiti and that Greg Sankey can investigate and analyze and take certain aspects of it and use it for the future of college football. Yes, the FCS playoff has operated successful, successfully for a period of time, but it is a much lower level of competition with a lot less money at play. And also, I needs to be added in here. For the most part, this, the top teams typically usually win the FCS playoffs. So it's not like it's creating some super competitive Why are we um, trying to create situation. a competitive league like the, that now? There are also a lot of conferences that operate in the FCS with a lot of dog shit. Just complete perfect example. The NEC is so desperate to add teams. It just added Mercyhurst. Mercyhurst was a two and nine division two or three team last year that has never been a competitive football program. This is where we run into problems is that because in the current conference structure, these conferences are always looking for a competitive edge. They're always looking to get better. There's always going to be reshuffling, which leads to unworthy and shitty football programs being brought into certain conferences. Perfect example is Kennesaw State and Delaware moving up to the conference USA conference. All I'm saying is that I think, but they're not quali that, they're not qualified for the what you and I are trying to talk I, about. I, I'm just throwing that out there that a perfect example of desperation is grabbing really low down to bring somebody up. I don't think it's it's unrealistic to think that the ACC, if somehow Florida State and Clemson, when their contract is up, say say they can't get out of the lawsuit, say out in 2036 when they leave, which they will try to leave that they're scraping the bottom of the barrel and the ACC has UTSA and UTEP in it. That doesn't help the competitive nature because the, the, the capitalistic environment of these conferences, they're eating one another. We need one entity and one, you're talking about wanting to have a commissioner. The only way that we get a commissioner is that if there is a new league created. And I think it makes perfect sense to have seven, 10 team divisions that compete with one another. I agree with you, but tearing it out oh, is dumb. You, what That's dumb. You take out of the SEC then. You think that Vanderbilt needs to stay in the in the SEC? Like that 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 does nothing for what me. What are you going to do with the other leagues? And Joe, just throwing this out there. By the way, to your point, if you take those other leagues out, those ten leagues, they're still going to have all the qualifying bids. You're just all you would do is split them down the middle and just separate them. Correct, but guess what? Some of those teams that you're talking about are still going to be in those divisions, and some of those teams are still going to suck. Vandy's still going to be in division and still be a part of it and still is going to suck. Same thing with the Big Ten. Those teams are still going to be in divisions and still suck. 
What are I, don't, we, I mean, what are we? Wait, just, I don't. I don't, under, I don't really think. I don't really understand how that plays into whether or not this is a good good idea or not. It's not a good idea, Joe. What is wrong with the regular season? There's nothing wrong with the regular season, but okay. we need to so, hold on. Hold on. If there's nothing wrong with the regular season, the reason that we're having these conversations is because not everybody can agree on the playoff. That's why we're having these conversations. The reason that you want a Super League is because of the playoff. And what I'm telling you is you have a good model that's already in place. I don't, and I think that most that are forward-thinking don't look at this purely as we need the Super League in order for the playoff to function better. This needs to happen to an order, one, get a singular focused commissioner who's running things to be able to put a more centralized you don't need contractual that NIL system. A more That is probably the most important part is fixing the transfer portal so NIL. And we can't have collective bargaining with the way that the NCAA You're operates. not going to have this is a, I tell you this, You're not going to have wait, But this would be a separate business. It's your newsflash. You're not going to have a collective bargaining agreement. Sorry. We're going to have collective bargaining, and it needs sure, to with happen. The con- sure, with the conferences or the schools. But you're not – you can do one entity. You don't have to get rid of the SEC, the Big Ten, fuck the ACC, none of them. You don't have to get away – do away with them because of one fucking school. By the way, Title IX still exists. There's still things that you got to – you have to do to get there, which you can't do. By the way – you're talking about a pro- professional sports league doing this. They are having success in fucking soccer. This isn't soccer. This is football. Hold on. I let you go and get a- and say what you needed to say. You don't need to do away with everything that you're doing in the regular season. What you're going to have to do, and by the way, te- you know why teams won out? Because the TV networks are not paying other conferences, what they need to be. Joe, they're all going to be in two leagues at some point anyway. You're going to have the AFC and the NFC. That's what you're going to have. So regardless of how long you're going to, like, do you really think the ACC survives? You've been telling me that they're not going to survive. You think the Big 12 survives? They're more than likely not going to survive when TV deals are up. My bottom line here and my, my, my overarching theme is, People are making very stupid decisions that have no business making these decisions. And by the way, the SEC and Big Ten will never go for this, ever, because it gets away from Greg Sankey. It gives away from Tony Petiti if you're doing one like one conference, one big Super League. By the way, has anybody asked European soccer if they've had issues? Oh, that's right. They have had issues with these. The fans legitimately have issues with these things. They went to this as a, out of desperation. And quite honestly, Joe, you don't need des- desperation in college football right now. You can all have one central voice that all five power f- or powerful commissioners can agree on on decisions. What, okay, like, okay, why, why are okay, you This is the oh, wait, wait, this oh, is the oh, biggest. Oh, hold on. Why are y'all trying trying to progress something that, by the way, just throwing this out there, the wheel's not broken. The wheel has not It is broken. That's the whole problem. It's fucked up right now. The wheel is not broken. Can I tell you how the wheel's not broken? No, they're going to make more. Hold on. Please hold on. They're going to make more money now than they ever had. How is that wheel broken? Just because for this very brief period of time for the next five years that there is a lucrative media rights deal for the college football playoff does not mean that we don't have crippling issues that will really debilitate and disrupt college football with NIL. NIL in the portal has nothing to do with the Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It has everything to do with it. One of the most important things that I just brought up a second ago, why this is necessary, is because instead of, and the reason why there's going to be never any progress for fixing NIL in the transfer portal, is that because every different conference has a different amount of say on how they think it should be changed. But when there's one centralized voice, it makes negotiating with athletes a million times easier. And you're, you're, every one of you who keeps saying this are missing the one big factor. What? Number one, you can't stop NIL. Okay, it's never going to stop. It's not, but it's. You can I'm not it, saying. But hold on. Being suggested uh, to stop it. That's not what's okay. being suggested. Fine. 
that's my point. If if nothing is being suggested about NIL and how to fix things, we're, that is a whole different conversation. That's not what I just said. That's all I'm saying exactly is that it is exactly what you just said. No, I just said I, it is not being suggested to just kill off NIL. What is being suggested is being able to properly and effectively negotiate okay. with athletes. And if you think, by the way, if you think that anything is going to change from the top dogs and who the top dogs will always be, Joe, I'm sorry. It's never going to change. When Alabama is rolling, Joe, Alabama is rolling. When Notre Dame is rolling, Notre Dame, Ohio State, LSU, Georgia, USC, it will never change. You want me to tell you one massive reason why? Because there's a mega billion dollar booster who will never let his team fail. The failing that they will do is nine and three. See, y'all are trying to make more equal of this. There's never going to be equality. Regulating any of this is not going to work because the top dudes, the dudes, the alpha males, the guys that sit up top will always be the alpha males and the alpha dudes up top. This isn't being – okay, you're bringing up very small parts of the conversation that aren't it's, important for the whole recruiting argument. Recruiting is Wait. never a small part of anything. I, I don't disagree with that, but the okay. whole – there, there are – wait, there are – the point of this is not to create more equality within college football. Then Everybody, why, why can't tier three teams play tier one teams? I, I'm I'm removing that. I'm remo I'm saying I agree with you that the tiering of playing teams That's does not make doing, sense. Though, so we can't but, okay, wait, wait, wait. I agree. But we, you can't take that out if that's what they want to do. If that's the model. No, 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 no. Wait, but wait. Just because that this the is what paragraph. It's just literally in the first paragraph of the article that they want to do that. You can't just take it out because you want to win an argument. Just No, that's not what I'm saying. Just because that that was what the first pitch was does not mean that it will be in the final platform. You're 100% right. None of the schools are agreeing, going to agree to that, and I think that will be the first thing that's going to be removed. But what I'm trying to say here, if, if that is taken out, everything else that is being pitched by them, to me, makes perfect sense. It makes perfect, perfect sense. There aren't more than 70 competitive college football teams in the country that are capable of, of showing up and, and, and winning and winning football games. Hold on. We stop. need to I cut the fat. I got to ask you a question. With all due respect, that's exactly what the college football playoff has put in part with all the minute qualifiers, is it not? No. Bullshit. If you win your if conference, you four, you're at least you within the, four, the top 20 of the teams. No, if you have four, okay, power five teams or power four teams that will get a certain amount, a number of teams in, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. If Vanderbilt wins the SEC, then what? But, but that's but that's literally never going to happen. No. <laughs> They're going to be a part of the 70, bud. But, but you're – okay, but you're implying – basically what's being implied by you right here is that the SEC has some sort of catastrophic situation where Vanderbilt, while still sucking, wins the SEC somehow. And then no, that it's unjust you know for them to go right, to the playoff. You know a program right now that you could trim the fat of, but you won't? Let what? Move the argument to Florida. Joe, you will kick a team out that has three losing seasons. By the way, I'm going based off of everything I read in the article. T Florida right now will be a Tier 3 program. They won't play Georgia in, in your model of what you're trying to project. So then, guess what you'll do? Let me tell you what you'll do. You'll say, okay, well, guess what? The old, You're taking away rivalries. You're taking away teams that we, we want to play. Joe, the reason that these teams are going to conferences is because of geo geographical rivalries, Texas, Texas A&M, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. We forget about the big, the big West days. My, my only point is it will not work. You, okay. can, you can have a conference and have a playoff, and if everybody's bitching about money, okay, well, then they're going to leave the conference. Joe, they don't want to be in conferences anyway. It's going to come down to a big two. 
Okay, so this is where I get even more confused. And by the way, I'm done talking about the tier stuff because I don't support that. So I'm not going to sit here and argue with you about it because but I don't that support the crux. that. That is the crux. No, it's not. It's oh. not the crux of the whole pitch. The whole crux of the whole pitch is that there's 70 teams that are broken up in a certain amount of divisions. There is one central entity that negotiates with a collective bargaining agreement on NIL in the transfer portal that would limit unlimited movement of players if they sign into a deal like I had been talking about a million years you're this whole time that there need to be contracts that you're forced to stay at a school for a certain period of time if you sign to pay for a certain amount of money and more importantly that they're the biggest part about this is that revenue distribution is not an even split it is also then even more it should never be an even split it would then be and this was brought up that it should be based on brand value that is something Bro, that's, that's incredibly that important now that doesn't happen in the SEC. It's not based yes, on brand it value. It's an even split. In it's an even. It, it's an they, even split. No in the bullshit. SEC. They get. The Where does it say that, that it's based on brand value? Huh? You're saying you're saying that in the SEC right now that certain teams get more money because they're bigger brands. That's not, not true. No. What we look at is the TV deal. But what you're forgetting in that contract is every other sport that exists. It's not just football that gets that money, bud. I, I know. I understand. That. Okay. You do realize that Vandy, as an example, was the most watched baseball team in the country last year, not named LSU. But baseball's this much of no, the amount not. of money. Okay. That's... Women's basketball. What you going to do? This... All right. So I, I come, I this, come this... down to the point of the, the bottom line for me is why don't you want to keep conferences? I, I, I don't. Okay, because at the end of the day, what you're talking about, and you keep referencing this, is that eventually it's just going to become two conferences that go head to head with one another, an NFC and the AFC. That to me is not much different than talking about projecting something like this, because those two conferences are just going to be two 35 team conferences that are separated into, let's say, four divisions each. Philip, you no can leave if you like, but Joe, the, the bottom line is. First off, let's get to re- I'm not, I'm going to I'm going to I'm not going there. Let's get to the realistic point of this instead of the uh, part of the instead of debating it. It's not going to happen. Sorry. It's not going to happen. Greg Sankey right now it's not going to happen. If you think that any SEC commissioner over their dead bodies will allow this to happen, you got another thing coming along with the Big 10. I don't disagree that this entity's plan will probably not be the one that is pitched and 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 enacted on. I think in what I said earlier, I really think that the Big Ten and the SEC analyze this, they take the information from it, and then with their, you know, whatever they what do they call it, a joint venture or whatever, they're smart enough to use that that period of time to sit and break it down in that panel or board or whatever the hell they called it and try to figure out how they can pivot off of it because there are useful aspects of this the sec and the big 10 don't want to pivot shit off of their conference now meaning like for example there's no team really that the big 10 wants to get rid of no real team that the sec wants to get rid of Right? Yeah, but they want to be able to. They want to be able to add okay, that's the cute. top three quarters of the other conferences, and they okay. just lose the shit ones. Okay, so they're so basically what you're telling me is that they're already doing it. Yeah, while maintaining that to some extent the same spirit that you've had of college football, correct? Well, it's. The, I mean, we're realistically not okay. going to have the same so exact spirit. Of what it. you're basically basically what they're trying to do, which won't work is they're trying to get one collective voice uh, or bargaining agreement that isn't going to work without the conferences. They're not going to give up their power. So when you talk about realistically how this would play out, it it won't. I, 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 maybe they take some things. Maybe you're right. Take what? The regular season. There's nothing wrong with the regular season. Not shit wrong with the regular no, I, season. I, 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 I okay. don't disagree with that. Oh, you know what you need to work on? If you think you have a problem, fix the playoff. And you know how you you fix that? Here's just how maybe it should work. Don't have automatic qualifiers and let the best teams that you want to rank 
rank them. It, it's, it's quite honestly, Joe, it's where every other sport legitimately, okay, works off of a winning law system. No, be, no, because we can't do that in college football. So then we immediately turn back to the committee making the decisions and then everybody being dissatisfied with the committee making the decisions. If you're at 11, 10, 11, 12, and you're worried about what, what they're saying, quite honestly, you, sh you had other losses in the season that you shouldn't have lost. That's the bottom line. Yeah, it's a great argument. That's a great argument for it's the third team argument. in the SEC. It's, it's, it's a not great an argument. It's that's a great point. It's if, if, opinion. If you're the third team in the SEC, then you shouldn't have any argument of 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 why you're upset that you didn't get a higher seat. Where where are they arguing about it now? Well, you're you just point you're just trying to make this point that like if you're the tenth or the eleventh or twelfth seed in the playoff, then you you need to be worried about winning those games. Well, the is that third not what team you're in the SEC is an automatic qualifier, so they'll be in there. Not currently. Yes, Joe. The, yes, they will be, buddy. You have automatic – the third team in the SEC will be in the playoff. Bottom line, it's automatic. Four teams from the SEC. Wait. Four teams from the Big Ten. Is it not? The, no, the multi-team league automatic qualifiers, that has since been – not scrapped, but they're moving away from that pitch because it was realistically it's not going to be approved. It's not going through. And it, they didn't scratch anything. They proposed that it would go away. Right now, as of right now today, you no, have not. where when where is this information? I th that there was no, talked we about debated about it a month ago. It, yeah, but it was it was discussed that there would be multi team, multi conference, multiple conferences, that, multiple teams from okay. conference that, that where that has not been solidified. It? You know how they solidified it. When they got the TV revenue and everybody agreed, the but reason that was, they but the agreed, automatic number of automatic qualifiers has not been solidified. That has not been solidified. When was that solidified? Am I crazy? Yes. That has not been a. You're gaslighting me right now. I'm not gaslighting you. I'm looking it up. I mean, I don't. Right there now, are, the la the the last thing that was reported on is that that they're they're shifting towards it end up being, you know, four and nine, it, huh? Four on four automatic qualifiers and then nine. And they vo they voted on it when they got the TV revenue. I I don't see that anywhere. Joe, we debated on it. You we read the article. Am I crazy? Now you we guys debated it. Crazy. We debated the concept because that was what the Big Ten and the SEC were pushing for. But I don't think that that's been. Right we're about to find out right now. Automatic qualifier college football. That's what I looked up. I don't see that anywhere. Playoff. I see that it was discussed, but that's the that's the most of it. In this new format, this is per the SEC, the four highest ranked conference members of the Big Ten and the, and the SEC will have four automatic qualifiers, February 29th, 2024. Where is the, where is the, it's where based, is that? It's just right here on Google. Wait, you're reading the first thing that's on the top on Google? Uh-uh. It was, it's in the article. It's the, it's the caption. The five plus seven model. Okay, they, we're we're off we're off of, on a on a tangent. We're off on a complete tangent. I don't I don't think I don't think it's been formalized. I don't think I'm I'm like ninety percent sure that this has not been formalized. It, it's being pitched and negotiated right now. Then what in the hell were we talking about? We were talking about the concept of it. No. Well, okay. So here are... here is February twenty eighth. Oh, sorry. I... I'm sorry. Here it is. The athletic. It, yeah. That's not four teams. It's three, three, two, two, one model. The athletic said with the new TV bargaining agreement and the collective that they agreed upon, it's three teams from the Big Ten, three teams from the SEC, two from the uh, Big Twelve, and two from the ACC, and one Group of Five opponent. That is what the commit. This is part of the athletic. 
what the commissioners agreed upon based on the TV revenue split. Ross Dellinger also that. reported, this is in the On3 or the Athletic article, uh, Ross Dellinger said that Notre Dame split would be 1% in this model. What day was that published? It was published on February 29th. I don't I don't think that that was I, I, I recall wrong. I recall that it was being what was brought up is that it was being discussed and the SEC and the Big 10 were pushing for it. But well, it, I don't it, understand how you can agree Joe to the TV revenue that they split without have if you're agree Joe they agreed to a 33221, correct? They agreed to a TV revenue split of 33221. Then how do you not have an automatic qualifiers? I think we should move off of this because I don't. I would like to dig in this because I don't remember any of this happening. I'm not going crazy. You're right. It was discussed. It just. I don't think it's like formally like you, this is. Thing. My question to you: okay. How do you agree to the TV revenue split if you didn't have the three three two two one model? You you they they agreed to it based on the fact that there's just fourteen teams and that based on the amount of success of the well, there's twelve teams. teams. Well, but they're trying to expand it to fourteen. Yeah. Three three two two one is twelve. So fourteen's not in play yet. All right, we we need to move on topics because now I'm just getting confused. <laughs> we're not going to make any progress with this. <laughs> I'm just telling. I mean, maybe we're maybe I'm wrong. And if I, and look, listen, if I'm I don't wrong, think you're wrong. I just think that I don't. I don't. I, that stuff has been pitched and it's being discussed. I just don't think we've officially formalized it yet. I think that's what's well, being misinterpreted. And, 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 and I don't disagree with you at this exact moment. All mm-hmm. I'm saying is, is I don't understand how you agreed to TV revenue of 33221 and you don't have automatic qualifiers. Do you, you, you understand what I'm saying? I, I mean, I think you can agree to TV revenue without agreeing to the structure. Okay. Yeah, we're we're not going to make any progress here. <laughs> Let's talk about our good friends over at Home Field Apparel. I need to go take a Xanax. We'll be right back. Rafino and Joe Show is brought to you by Home Field Apparel, which is the best, without a doubt, premium collegiate apparel brand that is out there. They have over 150 different colleges that you can choose from, whether you're an Illinois fan or a Rutgers fan. Maybe you're an LSU fan like Blake, or maybe you're an Alabama fan. Whatever it is, even Idaho, they have so many different designs for so many different football programs that I can guarantee you're going to find some great stuff to help root for your favorite team. I've already gotten my Notre Dame stuff. Blake has his LSU stuff. Make sure you head on over to homefieldapparel.com to check out your team's collection of clothing apparel that they have on the website. And when you do so, when you check out, make sure you use promo code Rafino Joe to get 15% off your order. That is R U F F I N O Rafino Joe. Head on over to homefieldapparel.com and get your college gear today. I'm still searching to make sure that I'm not. I'm just not you're, not. you're not crazy. I just think that it was. I think we have our wires crossed. That was why I was saying that. Like, let's just cut the conversation because our wires are crossed right I mean, now. I'm We're gonna. We, it, like, I'm, re- like, I'm literally looking at the article from Dellinger right now, and it's literally saying that they agreed to a TV revenue which would have three automatic qualifiers for the Big Ten and the SEC. All right, you know, I'm just gonna. Add, I'm going to fucking ask him tomorrow. I'm going to ask him tomorrow. Okay. I, I'm going to ask him tomorrow. But hey, I look, just... if I'm wrong, please, Lord, for the love of God, okay. I was wrong. I just Maybe I understood, misunderstood the concept. I don't think you did. I just think that our wires were crossed, and I th- my whole point is that we would have spent the last 20 minutes of the show – it would have been the most unlistenable twenty minutes because we would have just been we would have been opening different articles and reading the headlines of all the articles. I'm glad, see, I'm glad you do what my wife does to me. Like, hey, Blake, it's just time to move on. Okay, you know, like it's time let's, to let's uh, let's end this. I'm a good producer. <laughs> it is. All right, Joe. Florida State had their uh, appeal, if I'm not mistaken, denied, or they were denied. And this has been a long, blown out pause, but blown out uh, legal battle when it comes to uh, (laughs) 
Florida State <laughs> trying to attempt to leave the ACC. Now, I will re- remind everybody that Clemson also said a lot of the same things that Florida State did not too long ago about potentially leaving the ACC as well. Joe, what are your thoughts on what's going on with Florida State right now and their current legal battle trying to leave the ACC? Yeah, just for the quick, um, the the full description of what happened, a judge in North Carolina denied Florida State's request to dismiss the ACC's lawsuit against the school. So the ACC countersued. They denied their, their request to dismiss it. Um, and ultimately, though, what came out of this, and I, and I referenced the the article in CBS Sports that I read, the exact quote that stood out to me, the one notable win for Florida State was the judge dismissed the ACC's argument that the Seminoles breached fiduciary duties to the conference, which basically states, and it's, it's saying that they still have an argument that it's still going to be heard while they're dismissing the, 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 the notion that the ACC, you know, the Florida, that Florida State shouldn't have to be sued by the ACC, they're still acknowledging that Florida State has an argument here. I think, though, that what, one thing that kind of signals to me and what I take away from all of this, I still support Florida State. I still think that Florida State absolutely has an argument, but this to me is a, a foreboding sign that it is not going to turn out as, as the way that they think it will. And I, I think that they are going to end in, end up getting screwed despite having a powerful argument that they're stuck in a really, really bad financial situation and that they would do much better on the open market. So back, exactly what I we talked about a month ago, right? Like, yeah. I mean, when I had a lot of Florida State fans mad at me, uh, you know, like, oh, Blake hates Florida State. No, I, I'm trying to be real here. You signed a contract. And to the way that I would understand it, like most civil cases work, there are majority of times buyouts in those clauses. Like if you get fired at work, a lot of you have severance packages. It's a buyout of you getting fired. My, my bottom line, Joe, here is this. I don't disagree with Florida State wanting to make more money. I don't necessarily disagree with them, okay, in reference to trying to leave and go somewhere where they will be, where they feel like they're more po- prosper. Uh, but – they feel like the, the the vision has moved to Tobacco Road, North Carolina, Duke, other places, whatever, than maybe themselves. I, I actually somewhat disagree with that, but in and of itself, I think that this sparked too because of I, – I don't want to say because they didn't make the playoff and it, it ramped up even more and the SEC team got in over them. I remind everybody, Clemson carried that conference for a long time, too. It's not – if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And I think that this comes off that they are losing in some aspects, which makes it them think that it's the ACC's fault. Well, no, you agreed to the same contract that everybody else in that conference agreed to. When it comes down to it, I, I, I would be – I'm going to be honest, and I can be wrong. But I would be shocked if they don't have to pay the ACC to get out. Unless they hold on. And what you could be the smart thing, why not hang on to 2026 when ESPN can void the contract? Why would you spend hundreds of millions of dollars? In okay. Patience. No patience. Zero. By the way, we got a 12 team playoff now. So I. I mean, I think we do. I mean, what do I do? We have a 12-team playoff. That part is true. Okay. (laughs) So you're going to get into the playoff. ESPN can void with the ACC in 2026. Sometimes you – it's like if you're at a job, Joe, and you want to leave, you want to leave, and you want to leave, but it's taken – it takes time and process, right? Like there are things that sometimes, Joe, I want to lose 100 pounds. I told you like dieting, working out, it's not going to happen overnight. Why not wait to 2026 instead of putting yourself in so much and even right now spending the money that you are with in these legal cases? It's nonsensical. You can say that you're mad with the ACC. You can put out a statement saying that you want to leave. You don't have to fight them in court. What do you find them in court for? For ultimately for you to have to go and win and lose? Like lose, you're going to lose. You sign a contract for a TV unless ESPN stood up and ESPN voided something with the ACC and did away with them, then, Joe, you come to a place where I, I don't see a, I don't see a way out for them the way that they think that they're going to get out. 
I want to throw this a, another way for you too. I think it's more of a win that the, the the appeal to dismiss, which they were just trying to throw this out. Basically, what a dis, you know a dismissal is obviously is what it sounds like is they're just trying to throw it out. They're going to give Florida State their day in court, and Joe, at that day, I think they're going to lose. By the way, I got really distracted uh, for Antonio asking if we're watching WrestleMania. That made me laugh. Um, but to get to your oh, point, by though. The way, by the way, I watched WrestleMania last night. The Rock and Roman Reigns won. I saw, I saw some of the clips of it. Um, I'm not a big WrestleMania guy. though. Please, I'm not either, me. but The Rock is in it. I'm like, and it's on Peacock. It's not like you got to purchase pay-per-view. To, to, get, <laughs> to get back to what we're talking about, though. Um, I don't think it's a foregone, a total foregone conclusion that they're going to lose. And I think that the the very clear reasoning why they're pushing for this partially impatience, partially because they want to be one of the early teams to be able to pick where they end up. You know, they, they want to be in the best situation because they deem themselves to be one of the most well-represented brands in college football, them and Clemson that are not being, given this necessary support that they need. And this, that's kind of why I stand with them, why I stand and think that their argument makes sense. But, and I, I, have, I have, don't have the contract, nor do I have the patience to read through the, the disgusting contract that it's probably ridiculously long to know how effective it is to get them out of it. That's why they hired lawyers. I see your argument, and you didn't have this previously, that is it really worth their time and effort and money to go forward in trying to take them to court. I will add this though, in a somewhat of a counter, it's too late. It is way too late for them to try and go backward. Their displeasure. And I think that this all comes down to that meeting that happened. I think it was last summer when there apparently was a really heated whole argument that had happened during the, the this meeting with, with some of the top teams. And when there was the whole right, I remember was click, yeah. yeah, the whole little click that was, was a super seven or something stupid like that. that they called it. I just think that the relationship has soured so much that they're almost, it feels as though they're doing it fully out of spite. That kind of feels like where we've gotten to with this, where both sides, it, it's just a messy, really messy divorce. And one side's going to get the house. The other side's going to get the car and one side's going to get effed and the other side won't. Yeah. And you know, like they're, I think it ramped up too, Joe, when they didn't make the playoff over Alabama. Right. And, and mm -hmm. from a social media aspect, they got more pissed off. Now, I think we need to throw Clemson into this too now, okay, because Clemson didn't sue – I mean, Clemson did sue the ACC. They they went into federal court and they filed a, a, a suit on them as well. Joe, I, I got to be real with you. I, I mean, th there comes a point where, you know, like we were always waiting for the hat to fall of which team, other university was going to follow Florida State, and it was Clemson. If I'm them, I'm sitting on my hands. Well, I actually would throw this out there. And again, I am not a legal expert. But I would argue that if Florida State and Clemson can convince one or two other teams to actively pursue their own lawsuits, that will divert attention and resources. Like there, There's only so many resources and time that the ACC can dedicate to this. So say you get four teams on board. That's a lot of goddamn time and energy and money. But the problem about this. that, the problem with that is, is if they're all making the same countersuit, all three, uh, a, a federal judge can put them all in one and make uh, one firm ruling. So you got to be careful on how you're doing that. You, See, you remember, I'm not a legal expert. I wouldn't have thought right, of that. You remember when when Virginia wanted to sue the the NCAA too, and they and they the federal court put them both together. That's yeah. exactly what they would do. Now the the question becomes. For the ACC, Joe, if they if if they do what we think that they're going to do and win this, what is the what is their future, in your opinion? What is the ACC's future if they? Yeah, because look, if you get a payout, let's just say it's a hundred million dollars from two, if you get two hundred million dollars for an example, I mean they got two hundred million dollars that they could throw at hypothetically to Notre Dame or whoever they want to throw to, and it's going to be more than that if they were to leave. I guess the question becomes, like, if they win these, then what? Well, that's what I don't – like, I, I don't know how to interpret it because say you win, 
the relationship's bad already and it's getting worse that why would you want to keep these schools around that are might you know not actively sabotage but just don't don't want to be there i don't you, think you know, that, i don't think that the acc wants them to be there if they don't want to i think they want their money they just want their money yeah i think that that's right. true I, I, I would I would also argue though that just because they've got money, I mean, I just because Notre Dame gets dangled a fat check, I don't think that because we've seen that they have. I'm, I'm they, just throwing them out. Right. There. I'm just throwing but them out. But that's their but that but that's their best option. That really is their best option, unless like I as I mentioned earlier, they start throwing money around to UTEP and UTSA and, and Tulane. Like, does that really make the the conference better? If they were smart, they would. And then on this until 2026 and let this be void. No, you I was going to make a jackass take and say that they would merge with the Big 12. They could. I mean, they could. I, I, I don't know. I don't think that they'd merge. But you know, you know what's very interesting in all of this? You know who we really hadn't seen anybody like ha, has ESPN um, or, well, let's just say has ESPN backed Clemson or Florida State? We would if really, really if, if ESPN really wanted the ACC done with, they can do it. And we'll, we might have to wait and see until 2026 until they let them do it. I, that's the way that I see this is because, I mean, ESPN is a, a massively large corporate monstrosity owned by an even bigger corporate monstrosity. So there, as you're talking about, because contractually – they're not going to publicly or silently back one of these schools because they need to wait till 2026. Well, you, you, know, why, you know why I think ESPN's not saying anything? Just want to watch it play out and see what happens. No, I think it's deeper than that. I think they knew that Saban, it was going to be Saban's last rod. I think the executives knew, and they put Alabama over them, and then Florida State got more pissed off, and they're mad at, uh, was it not Jim Phillips, but Boo Corrigan, or whoever in the hell that they're mad at that they didn't they, they didn't get into the playoff, newsflash, man. You, you I mean, look, I, I know it sucks. I, I would hate it if it were my school. Okay, I like legitimately, I would. But there comes a, there comes a time where when you got a Nick Saban Alabama team that just comes off a win against Georgia, sorry, maybe your brand or people don't think that your brand's big enough. And I hate saying that about Florida State. I think they got a massive brand. I think Florida State's a fantastic university. But what, you know what the executives just told you? You weren't bigger than them. And that was the bottom line. So you can be mad at Boo Corrigan. You can be mad at the ACC. And by the way, you've had – I got to be real, Joe. I've said this before. They have had bad decisions athletically multiple times, right? Like, okay. I mean, you, you know, like – and so they have not been completely well ran. Some of your financial issues are, are your own – of your own doing. I don't think, though, that it's fair to say that there's any lack of brand size for Florida State. No, I think but that, what I'm saying is they think okay. that the reason they didn't get in was because of the SEC. No, you didn't get in because you weren't bigger than Alabama. I, I think it's I think it's actually the inverse. I think it is more so that they blame the ACC for well, negatively that's, representing. That's what them. I was trying to say. Okay, they're blaming the SEC. They're blaming the ACC. When really the SEC is the one that's – Nick Saban's the one that's screwed. Right. And, and they're the, still the mad at Herb Street. Can we get over that? Like, do you yeah, see – Yeah, that one's this? never made any sense to me. That's – like, you're taking it You're taking it out on on somebody who's just doing his job and commenting on this. Like, that, that – I mean, it goes – obviously, we deal with that every single day. Just because we have a take on something and you don't agree with it, people get upset. They're more than upset with him. I think they want that man dead. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but if it, if one or if you or I were up there on ESPN talking about that, we we would have more aggressive takes, and we did have more aggressive takes. Sure, we'd probably have and the same. Know, you know what? There. And you know what? We were right. So the bottom line was, you can say that our takes were loud and obnoxious. Loud and right is what I hear. Sure, <laughs> that's our tagline. Loud and right. <laughs> all right Ugh. well uh anything else stand out to you though over the last couple of uh over this last week no i uh i purposefully saved 
our next ranking show, which we're going to do top five head coaches. I'm sure that that is going to end very, very well. And we won't argue with no, one I, another. One I do think that that is probably, can I be real with you more than mm -hmm. coordinators? I think that that is the most, are we doing that tomorrow? Yeah. I think we'll that, that is that the most now. intriguing conversation that we, we have had in these, in these rankings. I thought you were about to say that it's we're going to agree more. And you said that about the defensive coordinators, and we yelled at each other. Like, we shouted way more I'm at each other sure than we did. I, well, I'm pretty sure you and I are going to have the same number one. Oh, yeah, it's Kirby. R right. I would assume you and I are going to probably have the same number two. It's not Brian Kelly for me. I didn't. Okay. Who would you I, have I, did, I thought you would say – that your number two would be Marcus Freeman. No, I'm not putting him at number two. I'm not a jackass. I mean, he's like he's like eight for me. I think that's fair to put him at eight. Top eight? Yeah, top ten. I mean, he's a great recruiter. Nah, maybe I'm I'm, I'm saying that off the top of my head. At least yeah, top fifteen. I, at least top. 15. Oh yeah, he's. I'll give him top fifteen. Like you ten. Who, I'd say ten is a fair spot to put him. That would be fine. You know who else I would think that people won't put it, wouldn't put in there, but probably should. Who? Ryan Day. I'm gonna put Ryan Day in there. Okay. All right. Well, because well, we gotta I, take it. We gotta take into account that there's no Saban, there's no Jim Harbaugh. Those are two really big, big names that like open up this huge chasm of like who the hell do you put put can, in there? Can I ask you a question that I'm sure we'll debate on? Do you put in Dabo? No, absolutely not. Uh, we're talking about this moment right now and going forward. Not we're not ranking based on current accomplishments over their coaching tenure. Because like I could pick fucking Kirk Ferris because he's won a bunch of football games. More? I think that that's going to be a debate that I'm going to have with myself. I've, that's the first guy that I'm thinking of that's going to you know that would be a not I, controversial. You know, you know what? Ironically, you know what conversation you and I are probably going to have tomorrow. Mike Just, Norvell. I, no, I was going to say. Brian Kelly or, or Kalen DeBoer. That's a good. That's a good point. That's a very good point. That's probably the the conversation we're gonna have. If you want to hear two really loud Italian yelling tomorrow, you can be here at six p.m. Yeah. Central Standard Time. All right. For Blake Rafino, Josh, uh, Josh, Joe Daly on. Uh, good show, buddy. Good show. We kept it somewhat cordial. No, we didn't. <laughs> I mean, that's cordial for the way that we've been yelling at each other the past month. See, here's the thing that I never understand when people get yell, get mad. Oh, they're yelling at each other. We're debating on something. It's not like yeah. I'm calling you a no good son of a gun, you know? Yeah, if we were slinging insults, then it'd be a different conversation. It's just a yeah, conversation. like if I, if, I, if I called you a big... <laughs>